This is an electric fuel pump and of course it resides right in the fuel tank so it's pretty hard to get at if you need to do any inspection. Thankfully there's been a uh, standardized uh, test with the use of an oscilloscope that allows us to see while the pump is operating in the tank the health of the commutator, uh, all of the segments on it to see if there are any that are weak or not uh, contributing. It's rather impressive in that these uh, pumps typically spin at around 7500 rpm and they typically have eight segments on the comm. So if you do the math, 8 times 7500, that's 60,000 of these segments that whirl around in the course of a minute. And yet they can be readily seen on an oscilloscope graph. Uh, they're spaced the peaks about one millisecond apart. And uh, it's a test that only takes a few minutes, can tell so much about the health of the pump, and it has become a staple of the automotive oscilloscope work. So why has this technology not carried over to the starter armature? Why is no one conducting an oscilloscope commutator test on starters? That's because there are two major obstacles to overcome if you want to do a test where you can see the condition of the commutator on a starter on an oscilloscope screen. The first hurdle is the sheer speed of it. So if we were impressed with the fuel pump spinning at 7500 RPM, today's modern starters are geared and they spin at twice that speed, at 15,000 RPM. And they're not whirling around eight uh, segments on the comm. They're whirling around three times as many. So the bottom line is that instead of having 60,000 segments whirling around in a minute, on a starter, you're talking about 360,000 segments whirling around in that one minute period. Think about it for a minute. Now we're right into, instead of having peaks that are one millisecond apart, we're now one six of that. We're into nanosecond territory. So what's the plan to deal with that first hurdle? Well, we're going to try to capture the best waveform that we can. I like that uh, high-res experimental mode within 8-scope, um, the HT6022, the Hantec, and the OSC42 uh, respond very well to that mode. So everything that we can to get the best waveform. And another thing that should help us overcome that hurdle is for us to have a true appreciation for what it is that we're looking at. Just how fast all of this is happening and that we're able to capture it. And if there are any imperfections along the way, you know, just to um, just appreciate what is there will help us. The second hurdle to doing an oscilloscope commutator test on the starter is the compression strokes. So unlike a fuel pump that has a fairly steady amp draw across the board, the starter undergoes all these violent compression strokes. And uh, if we are trying to just see uh, details of the uh, segments on the commutator across these violent compression strokes, it's going to be pretty tough. I alluded to this problem in gadgets number 75 when we're designing the circuit for this uh, relative compression dongle. So we're experiencing actually the inverse problem where it was the pesky little... Um, uh, segments of the commutator that we're writing over top of the compression waves that we were interested in. So what's the plan to deal with this second obstacle? This, our latest gadget, a 33 Hertz high pass RC filter. We have the filter, a BNC cable, a couple of alligator clips. I'd like us not to get too preoccupied with what's in this. There's going to be a build video that's going to describe that. For the time being, I'd like us to focus on what it does, and that is to knock down frequencies below 33 hertz and allow the higher frequencies, like our segments that are whirling around at this incredible speed, to allow that frequency through. So we've addressed the two obstacles to conducting that test. Let's go and do one.
We're using the Loto OSC 42 combined with 8 scope in auto mode module mode. Our new 33 hertz high pass RC filter, alligator clips to the positive and negative terminals of the battery. Let's go crank that. Looks a lot like a relative compression test, right? We're going to uh, zoom into this and we're going to study that. You'll notice that the filter did not completely eliminate the compression strokes. But look in between these compression strokes and you will see a very broad, flat, horizontal area that would contain maybe 20 or so uh, revolutions of the armature. What remains of these compression uh, strokes is actually uh, helpful as a reference also. So uh, this is uh, a four-cylinder engine, so two compression strokes would equate to one uh, engine revolution. If we measure the distance between those two at 214 millisecond, uh, 60,000 divided by 214, th th we were cranking the engine at 280 RPM. So let's examine this uh, flat area that lies between our compression strokes. These starter motors uh, tend to come with either 24 or 28 segments. Those are very uh, common. We don't have access to a 24 or 28 labels, of course, but uh, take a look at this by stretching out seven labels to include uh, every fourth peak or so. Um, it, this seems to be a pretty good fit, and I think that it's a pretty safe call that this um, starter armature has uh, 28 segments to it. That would represent one revolution of the armature and it took 3.8 milliseconds to do that. 60,000 again divided by 3.8 is 15,464 RPM. That's the speed at which that armature is spinning at. So now we're coming to what we were discussing at the very beginning of the video, is to have an appreciation for what it is that we're actually seeing here. It's actually incredible, right? And uh, I'm pretty sure that if there was a bad starter, I don't have one for you, but if there were uh, segments of, that had failed across there, they would show here, and then about 28 or so more, there would be a repetition and so forth, right? I think it would uh, show up. Let's do another one. Here's what we're going to be bringing in the shop next. We've been in this white stuff since uh, November 1st, and it's going to stick with us until the end of April. Same setup, OSC 42. Our RC high pass filter is here. We're connected to the positive and negative terminals of the battery. H scope in automotive mode. Let's go record. Let's go crank that. Cool, we've got a waveform. We're going to study this. Let's zoom into our work. And uh, here we're dealing with an eight cylinder engine. Again, our um, RC filter was able to provide us in between the compression strokes with um, a, a broad flat area that contains a number of armature revolutions. Let's zoom into that. Here, it seems that eight labels with three peaks per label. So we have maybe 24 segments on this commutator. And it 
represents one revolution and it has a 5.7 millisecond duration. So 60,000 divided by the 5.7 milliseconds is equal to an RPM of 10,526 for that armature. Again, I'm pretty sure that if there was a missing uh, segment or two on here, they would show and they would carry across into the next band of 24 uh, segments. So that's the gadgets playlist method of doing oscilloscope work on a starter armature. And uh, look forward to the build video for this uh, RC uh, high pass filter. See you then.